Hi everyone, I'm Meryl from Pasta Social Club and Food52's resident pasta maker. Today, let's talk a little bit about Thanksgiving. Of course, the holiday is going to look really different this year for so many of us. I myself will be cooking for two instead of enjoying the usual five different types of potatoes and pie alongside 20 of my closest relatives, but that does not mean the holiday still can't be really special. In my experience, <laughs> I have found that making pasta by hand has provided a source of solace during difficult times, as well as a hands-on way to connect with loved ones. So if you're also cooking for two or four or six, and you're looking for a festive meal that's also kind of a bonding activity, then I really hope you'll give this recipe a try. Another perk of this dish is that if you are a planner, especially around holiday cooking, pretty much every component can be made in advance. So come Thanksgiving morning, you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the day a little bit more. Okay, so with all of that said, let's get cooking. Let's get started with our squash. I'm tossing a medium butternut squash that I've peeled, de-seeded, and cut into about one inch pieces with a little olive oil, salt, and pepper, then transferring it to a baking sheet. I'm also using a kabocha squash that I had lying around, which I've cut into wedges, but you can use whatever sweet-ish winter squash you like. Delicata, acorn, honey nut are all great options. Both of these are going into the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes until they're very, very tender. While the squash roasts, I'm going to make some brown butter for our sauce and our filling. I know, this has to be good, right? To start, I'm adding 3 quarters of a cup of unsalted butter to a small saucepan over medium heat. Brown butter is just butter that's been cooked until the milk solids separate from the butter fat and toast until they're a beautiful golden brown. So I'm just going to let this go, stirring every so often until it starts to foam pretty aggressively and smell deliciously nutty. When I just start to see a golden color peeking through, I'm going to turn off the heat and keep stirring a bit longer to deepen the color. Then I'm going to transfer it to a heat proof bowl to stop the cooking so we don't have any burned butter on our hands. I'm setting aside a quarter cup for the filling and the rest I'm going to save for our sauce. The squash is still roasting away, so next I'm going to make a balsamic reduction that is the perfect hit of tang to tie this dish together. Add one cup of balsamic vinegar to a small saucepan over medium heat, bring it to a gentle boil, then reduce it to a simmer. I'm going to let this cook for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's thickened and coats the back of the spoon, like so. Of course, if you have some really excellent and fancy traditional balsamic vinegar like this one here, skip this step entirely and just drizzle on the good stuff. Now let's make the pasta dough. Almost all filled pastas are made with some combination of zero zero flour and eggs because of structure, flavor, and tradition, so that's what we're going to use for our tortelli today. I'm going to start by making a big hole in the center of my flour. By the way, you can absolutely use all-purpose flour if that's what you have on hand, and then add my eggs to the center. Traditionally, you'd start on a big, beautiful wooden pasta board, but I like to do this in a bowl to keep things tidy in my small one-bedroom apartment. Next, I'm going to whisk in little bits of flour from the inner rim of my well until I have a nice custard-like batter. This gives us a lovely, smooth, and consistent base for the dough. Next, I'm going to fold in the rest of my flour with my hands and sort of tap it in with my fingertips all the way down to the bottom of the bowl. This is sort of like a fold and smush action. I'm going to keep doing this, always folding towards the center until the loose flour is incorporated and I'm left with a shaggy dough. I often find this is the moment many people start to panic, but I assure you, if it's messy and looks like a total disaster, you're doing everything right. Now it's time to knead, which is when the dough will become nice and smooth, I promise. I'm going to use the palm of my hand to stretch the dough forward, don't worry if it's falling apart, and then fold it over on itself. Do this a few times in one direction, then rotate the dough 90 degrees and repeat. It's pretty hard to overwork pasta dough when making it by hand, so don't be shy about this. It usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes and it's a decent workout. The more you knead, the smoother and more elastic the dough will get, which means beautiful pasta sheets down the line. A good test to know if it's well kneaded is to gently tap the surface of the dough. If it springs back quickly, you're in good shape. I'm now going to wrap this tightly in plastic so it doesn't dry out and let it rest for about 30 minutes at room temperature. 
While the dough rests, let's get back to the pasta filling. Our squash is cool and ready to go, so I'm going to add it to a food processor and pulse it until it's smooth and creamy. Next, I'm going to add a third of a cup of finely grated Parmesan cheese, a third of a cup of whole milk ricotta, the quarter cup of brown butter that we set aside earlier, a generous grating of nutmeg and salt and pepper to taste. Another pulse and it should look like this beautiful creamy orange mixture. Just transfer it to a bowl or a piping bag and refrigerate it until you're ready to use it. Now it's tortelli time. First, I'm going to roll a portion of my well-rested pasta dough into a thin sheet. To get an even-ish rectangle, after I've rolled the dough through the machine once on its thickest setting, I fold the tapered ends into the center like an envelope. I'm looking for the width of the envelope to be similar to the width of the machine. Then I'm going to roll it back through the thickest setting once again. Once I have my wide sheet, I'm going to roll the dough through once on each progressive setting until I get to seven. I want to be able to see my hand through it, but it shouldn't be so thin that it feels like it's going to tear. Of course, if you don't have a pasta machine, you can definitely do this with a rolling pin. It'll take some elbow grease, but just roll it as thin as you can. Finally, I'm going to trim off the uneven ends, smush them up, and rewrap them in plastic. While working with the rest of my dough, they'll relax and rehydrate so I can roll them again at the very end. Now that we have our pasta sheet, I'm going to cut it into about two and a half inch squares. I have an unnecessary but very cool tool to help me do this, which is a big help if you make a lot of pasta and pastry. You can also fold the sheet in half lengthwise and cut it down the middle with a paring knife. Then just eyeball the squares. It's okay if they're uneven, you can always trim them later and either way, they'll still taste delicious. Next, spoon or pipe about a teaspoon of filling in the center of each square. It's tempting to add a lot of filling, but make sure you have a generous amount of dough all around so everything seals nicely and they don't explode while they cook. If the dough is a bit dry, use a spray bottle to lightly spritz the pieces with water or add a small amount of water with your finger to two adjoining edges of each square. To form the tortelli, bring opposite points together above the filling and press firmly to seal. Then, working on one side at a time, gently press out as much air as possible so there's a defined filling pocket. Once you've encased the filling, go back over the edges again to firmly seal. This also helps thin out the dough where the two layers of pasta meet so everything cooks more evenly. If you're a bit of a perfectionist like I am, trim the edges with a fluted pasta cutter or a paring knife so you're left with a more even triangle. The little scraps can be frozen and thrown into soup so nothing goes to waste. Place the finished tortelli on a baking sheet lined with semolina flour or cornmeal, then grab a relative, a roommate, a friend, or a movie and repeat the process until all of the dough is gone. To take the Thanksgiving theme a step further, I've paired this pasta with Brussels sprouts, one of my favorite fall vegetables. Add a couple of tablespoons of clarified butter or olive oil to a skillet over medium-high heat, followed by a generous amount of trimmed and halved sprouts. Sprinkle the salt and saute until golden about five minutes. They should be tender, but still have a bit of a bite. Remove them from the pan and set them aside. Okay, my friends, let's put this whole thing together. Cook the tortelli in well-salted water for about two and a half to three minutes. The edges should feel pliable, but always taste one to make sure they're done. Then transfer the pasta directly to a serving platter with a slotted spoon. While the tortelli cook, reheat the remaining brown butter over medium heat and add a small ladle of pasta water. Stir vigorously to combine and simmer briefly, then add another pinch of salt to taste if needed. To serve, spoon the butter sauce over the pasta and the Brussels sprouts. Finish it off with a generous shower of Parmesan cheese and a drizzle of that glossy balsamic reduction. All that's left to do is relax, dig in, and enjoy the holiday. Okay, everyone, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'm wishing you all a very happy and healthy Thanksgiving. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below and I really hope to see you next time. Bye.